Hello, everyone, and welcome to Earthing Live. We will get started here in just a few minutes at 3.30. Hello everyone, welcome to Earthing Live. We'll get started here in just a minute. Sit tight and get your questions ready, thank you. Hi everyone and welcome to Earthing Live where we answer your questions about earthing and grounding with our founder Clint Ober. We meet every day, I'm sorry, every Monday at 3.30 Pacific time. Uh, real quick before we get started, I just want to remind all of you that anything we talk about here is not meant to replace the advice of your doctor or your healthcare practitioner. Please always consult with your healthcare provider before making any adjustments to your medication or any recommended health routine. Here we are. Welcome everyone. Okay, um, get your questions ready. You can go ahead and submit them in the Q&A portion of this Zoom webinar. We are also broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook and you can submit your questions there in the comments section. Um, as always, my customer service department is here in the background helping me out. But if you have any other general customer service questions like tracking your order, placing an order, uh, you can contact them at help at earthing.com. You can visit our website at earthing.com and you can see all our FAQs and also chat with them or, or call them. So now I'd like to introduce uh, Clint Ober. He is our founder and CEO. He's been working for the last 25 years to spread the knowledge of the benefits of grounding the human body. Hi Clint, how are you? Hi Jennifer, I'm doing great. Happy to be here today. Yeah. All right, is that hot where you are? I think most of the country is sweltering this last week. Hard to get out and, and earth in this heat. It certainly is. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump right in here. Uh, okay. First question. 
so Rodney, he's joining us on Zoom. He has a question. Uh, would you have any suggestions for the best way to secure a mat on a carpeted floor so it doesn't constantly move? A uni mat. <clears throat> um, I really don't. <laughs> uh, duct tape <laughs> yeah. might not look very good, um, but that's probably the only thing that would work. I think if you maybe did some sort of double-sided tape, I mean, the, the bottom of the uni mat isn't the part that you're worried about. So you could put tape on the bottom, but I don't know how that would do with your carpet. Yeah. It could go to a, um, like Walmart or Target, and you're, they have those rug things you put under your rugs oh, yeah. to keep them from slipping. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they would work on carpet, but they might. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Okay, Jennifer is asking, if you're in a wheelchair, how do I use a grounding mat? <clears throat> well, we have a lot of people in wheelchairs using grounding mats. Generally, what a lot of them do is they will have, you know, just sit on the mat, put it in the, you know, in the chair, and then the cord, you can always connect and disconnect real easy, especially if you put it sideways. And uh, so it, it works very easy that way. Very good. Okay, I'm going to jump over to uh, YouTube right now. I have Gigi asking a question. Since I started earthing, my face is not sensitive or acne prone to touch or fabric. Can you explain how earthing makes this possible? I'm, I need to understand that more clearly. Okay, so I, she, I think what she's saying is ever since she started earthing, she's not as prone to, act, to acne on her face. Right. Yes. And her face doesn't seem as sensitive to fabric. So maybe like the type of uh, pillowcase she sleeps on or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty simple. As soon, when, you, when you get grounded, I mean, acne and all of those things are inflammation related. Uh, there are certainly uh, food, certain foods will uh, exacerbate that situation. But um, <clears throat> when you get grounded, it reduces the inflammation, especially the facial the circulation in the capillaries, in the skin capillaries, in the facial tissue. And there's a study on that on the Earthing website. I don't know the, I don't mm -hmm. know what we call that study, but <clears throat> uh, an hour of grounding uh, significantly improves the, the blood circulation in the uh, skin capillaries and that oxygenates the tissue. And like I, I tell most people, once, they, once they're grounded for an hour, if they'll go look in the mirror, they look 10 years younger. And it's because of the increased circulation and the, the face is pinker and rosier and <clears throat> the demeanor is uh, changed a little bit because when they're grounded, the pain reduces, so they're happier. Uh, they have more energy. And so anyhow, basically earthing is doing what it's supposed to do, reduce inflammation and return the body to normal, to return the immune system to normal function. Very good. Uh, Terry has a question about her daughter who started earthing and now feels that her heart beats faster when she uses the mat. Have you heard of this? Is this normal? Uh, well, normal, <clears throat> we know what a normal heart rate is. It's somewhere between, you know, 70 over 120, 80 over 120, plus or minus 10, depending on the health and energy, ener energetics and so on. So without knowing that, the parameters of it's kind of hard to um, speak to that. Uh, if it's somebody who is a little more fatigued before, but that's, you know, that I'm not sure that I can answer without knowing more information. So if that person wants to drop in a little more information, we can go back to it. Okay, Terry, you can go ahead and comment in the um, comment section on YouTube and that will get to me. Elvin has a question. Does earthing help kidneys or someone on dialysis who's waiting for a transplant? Well, <clears throat> the only thing, I mean, there's two things that grounding does. One is it reduces inflammation in the body. And <clears throat> anybody who has a chronic health disorder, uh, you had to have inflammation for an extended period of time like kidney or anything. And <clears throat> so if you, uh, I can relate to other diseases better, but um, if you, once you start grounding, it's like 
when I talk to the, a lot of the ladies who have MS, because that's who I probably deal with more than anybody, is <clears throat> as soon as they start grounding, I mean, the MS is eating up the myelin sheath on the nerve and, you know, they lose control of muscle control and the nerve, um, you know, you end up with pain, all kinds of things. But anyhow, as soon as you start grounding, then the free electrons up from the earth saturate the body with negative charge. And that reduces the radicals that are causing the inflammation that's oxidizing the, the, the healthy tissue. And I think, you know, we have people where they'll take the, cat, the patches that we have, the patch kits, and they put the patches right on the kidney and they have reduction in pain. So that means you're reducing the inflammation in the kidney. Um, so, but again, I don't know enough to really comment too much, but I will say this, that uh, if you can get grounded and stay grounded 24 <laughs> seven, uh, or if you have any pain in your body, you ground yourself until the pain stops or you ground yourself long enough and the body will heal up and it will return to normal. Because what's going on is the immune system gets compromised once we have inflammation and it spends all of its resources trying to take care of the fire and the damage that's being created by the inflammation. And therefore it, is, it, it um, interferes with the immune system's ability to maintain normal health. So the main thing is reducing the inflammation via grounding with mats, patches, outdoors, whatever it takes, get grounded, stay grounded long enough, then you, the body will, the inflammation will resolve and the body and the immune system will be able to return the body to normal. Now, I don't know if, you know, if, the, if an organ is damaged too far, too bad, that's a different situation. But generally speaking, you have to put the fire out, reduce the inflammation, which happens naturally with grounding, then the immune system will go back to work and try to restore any organ or anything that's wrong with the body. Okay. Uh, Judy has a question um, about her friend's mom. Mm -hmm. So this woman says that the electric currents in her body are not in sync and they're most likely caused by head traumas and blackouts. She says the neutron, I think she means neurons in her brain are mm -hmm. taken and need to be refused. Will grounding help? So it sounds like this woman is having issues with some brain function yes. and wondering if grounding will help. What I would highly recommend to find out is to, if you have a, some grass in your yard and a shade tree, or if you have a park close by where there's some grass and some shade. Uh, just go to the park and spend, you know, an hour at a time with your hands and feet on the grass or just sit on a chair and put your feet or a bench and put your bare feet on the earth where there's a little bit of grass or moisture and just sit there and let the, let the grounding, um, first of all, reduce inflammation, but it will also, there's the rhythms of the earth uh, are, there are rhythms there. And when you touch the earth then your body starts to sync up with those rhythms and then maybe it can help reset some of the things that are going on. But we do have a lot of results with, um, you know, like petite mal seizures, seizures and all kinds of mm -hmm. um, neurological uh, disorders. I remember one time I was talking to a lady and <clears throat> she was uh, just, excellent health, but she had some brain damage and uh, she was on the sidewalk and every time she would talk, she would start talking away and then halfway through the sentence, sometimes she would forget what she was talking about. Mm. And then so I, I just intuitively, I said, come over here with me, take your shoes off and let's stand on the grass and carry on that conversation. And she spoke perfectly. So I would, uh, you know, start experimenting, experimenting, figure out the time. And if it works at all, then, you need to get more grounded. Uh, you need to get grounded under any circumstances because you need to restore your immune system and get, get the inflammation out of your body. But experiment with this. Uh, the patches are good for when you can't be outdoors. Uh, the sleep mats are perfect for recovery during the night. Uh, the pillow covers are, you, you just have to experiment and start out in the park. Go find a creek, go sit on a rock, 
next to the creek for a day and, and see how see what effect that has on your physiology and your neuro, neuro, neurological issues. And if it does, then take it from there. Very good. It will. It will. Yeah. <laughs> Promise. Jennifer is asking, where do I place the alligator clip in order to ground my car? Okay, underneath the seat, there are some metal rails that the, sleet, the seat slides back and forth on. One of them is bare and has no paint on it, generally. And so you can just clip it on to there. Sometimes there's a little hole in the end, you stick it in the hole and clip it on. And so that's one way to do it. Otherwise you can go underneath the seat where the springs in the seat, the metal springs that hold the seat up. Uh, there's wiring going back and forth across there. Uh, so that will be connected to the metal frame also. And you can just stick the alligator clip on the metal underneath, any metal underneath the seat, you know, whether it's a spring or anything. And if it's got, has paint on it, then you have to kind of scrape it back and forth with the alligator until you get to bare metal, uh, which should be really easy, simple. And then you're grounded. Jumping over to YouTube here, um, Magdalene asks, can earthing help your hair grow? Well, <clears throat> I, I know you can probably speak to this, Jim, not for yourself, but many years ago, I used to have a pretty big bald spot back and it's getting, it's, it hasn't gone away by any stretch, but it is thinner. And I do have my a pretty good head of hair at 77. But anyhow, yes, my hair has uh, uh, grown, filled out a little bit better over the last 20 years. And uh, we have lots of report, especially women who have balding or loss of hair. Uh, the hair starts to fill in. Mm -hmm. um, we have some ladies who have worn wigs a lot and then all of a sudden they don't need them anymore because the hair started to fill in. So again, if you have loss of hair, that means you have inflammation. Uh, and so by getting grounded, sleeping on the grounded pillow, uh, it's going to reduce the inflammation and then everything is going to return to normal. And you know, having a good healthy head of hair is pretty normal. All right, Linda has a question. Can grounding help with the spike proteins that are being transferred from vaccinated people? Say that one more time. Can grounding help with the spike proteins that are being transferred from vaccinated people? Um, <clears throat> that I don't know enough about to answer. The only thing I can tell you is, um, and, I, and I just spent an hour on this earlier today uh, with a, a lady who had uh, a, an autistic child who had, you know, her younger children, they would go get one or two or three shots at a time. But anyhow, she went, took this one child, the last child to, and, and, and had a multiple shots at one time. And that child developed some symptoms related to vaccinations. And <clears throat> the thing that I've learned over the years uh, is you know, like when you're vaccinating somebody, then you, the immune system has to, you know, it becomes uh, you know, aggressive because it's got to identify what's going into the body and then it's got to come to terms with it and build immunity towards it. Mm -hmm. And in the process, there's a lot of inflammation created. And <clears throat> so the thing that I tell anybody based on my own experience and based on 23 years of experience with other people, uh, if you are going to have uh, inoculation of any kind, uh, to get grounded afterward, immediately afterward, because it's not going to affect the, the workings of the immune system, but what it's going to help with is going to prevent, you know, if you get a cytokine storm or any flare from the shot, then the, what it will do is it will help shut down the cytokine storm or help shut down the inflammatory damage that's being created as a side effect of getting the shots. And especially children, that's my opinion, not anybody else's. And, um, but um, ground 
uh, ground yourself after any kind of a shot because that's an assault on the immune system. Mm -hmm. And it isn't the immune system that's the problem, it's the cytokine storm or the inflammation that's created as a result of the shot. The shots are fine, it's the inflammation that's the problem. Okay, over on Facebook, Wanda is joining us. Uh, her question, we are having a pool and a spa put in soon. It will be concrete and salt water. Will it be grounded? Uh, I would believe so. First of all, the salt water, that's grounded all by itself. Um, <clears throat> you know, electron donors. And um, when they build the pool and the plumbing uh, where the water comes in and out, there's some there's going to be uh, some place somewhere either in the pump itself or somewhere where the water is being grounded. And if you can ground the water anywhere, it's grounded everywhere. So I believe it would be, I think by law, they have to be grounded in some fashion. Okay, Rodney, his question, are there any plans to develop a foot pad for use on a bed so that the bottoms of the feet can make direct contact? Um, we have patches for that. Um, we have socks. Yes. Um, we have had from time to time bands that go on the feet. Uh, a lot of people like them. I used them for years myself in the early days. Um, but we don't have anything that's going to go 100% flat on the, on the foot except for the electrode patches, which are profoundly effective on the feet and the um, socks. Um, I will tell you, you know, the, when you ground the body, you know, if you're laying on the body, your skin has a lot of resistance. It may have uh, 250K ohms of resistance, 250, yeah, 250K ohms of resistance on the bottom of the feet and in the hands. Electrons, I mean, your body is not copper wire. So electrons are not, never going to flow like they do on a copper wire. Uh, <clears throat> but what they do is they absorb electrons from the body, depending on, you know, the rate of negative charge you have. You're going to equalize with the earth. But <clears throat> when you lay down on the mat, um, there's, you, you, the electrons are going to migrate. Even if you have 5K or 5 ohms, the skin on your arm probably has five mega ohms of resistance. So electrons can't um, flow, but what they do is they migrate. I mean, they, it's like, like an ion in the, in the soil. The, the electrons, they, they go to, they are pulled to wherever there's positive charge. And, and so uh, I really, uh, believe that, you know, the electrons are not going to, going to go through your skin into your body via your arm unless you use an electrode patch or something uh, that's, that's good contact. Uh, it's like an EKG when you are going to do heart measurements or, you know, they have to put, use electrode patches that get conductivity through the skin because it won't go through the skin otherwise. Uh, if it does, it's, you know, it's uh, significantly reduced. <clears throat> but I think electrons migrate through your hands and your feet and wherever they need to, to go into the body and, you know, through your respiratory system or your, even your gastrointestinal system. Um, so <clears throat> uh, it's not, but the feet, I understand what this person is trying to do. I think it's, there's nothing wrong. It's like standing barefoot on the earth. It's good. Um, but again, I'll leave it at that. Um, I was trying to make a point there about when you're grounded, I, I want to finish that. When you're grounded, laying down, there's you're not just. It's not just about the electrons. When you're laying on a ground, then your body is uh, close coupled, meaning the electric field of the earth and the electric field of the body. Even though you're not touching the mat, as long as you're close to it, then your body starts resonating, and you know, or or resonating with the frequencies of the earth, and that helps to calm the nervous system, uh, the sympathetic. Uh, helps restore this parasympathetic and it just the body starts functioning better but <clears throat> but anyhow yes i'm sorry about that <laughs> no that's a good answer okay uh karen has a questions about um the earthing shoes or flip-flops that you've been um, speaking of in the last couple of webinars that you are trying to bring to the masses 
I assume that you would have to be walking on a conductive surface like grass or sand for the flip-flops flip to work. Is that correct? And thank you for all that you do. Yeah, any kind of concrete, sidewalk, patio, um, earthen floors and homes would be grounded, uh, like saltile tile and things like that. Um, grass for sure. Um, that will couple you with the earth and the migraine, I mean, the electrons will move back and forth in your body as you need them, as you're walking, producing energy. And uh, so that's all good. Um, the thing, even in the home, if you are wearing shoes in the workplace, you know, where you're not grounded, or in the home where you're not grounded, if you're barefoot, then you cannot build up static electricity on your body. And, and, and to understand what I'm talking about here, sometimes just go home, take your shoes off, just take your shoes off and, and notice the change in your whole physiology because you discharge that static electricity. But when you're wearing regular, regular shoes, then every time you take a step, it's not the scuff, it's just the contact and separation. Every time you do that, then you're building up the static charge on your body. And it does go into your, into your respiratory system, in your gastrointestinal system. So it's a charge on the body. So <clears throat> going barefoot in the house or wearing grounded flip-flops in the house are going to prevent static electricity. The only time you're gonna be physically grounded to the earth uh, to absorb electrons from the earth is when you're on concrete, grass, sand, gravel, beach, park, going for a walk in the park, walking the dog, but it's life changing. <laughs> Here's a question for you personally. Joanne is asking how you ground yourself every day. Can you give us an example of your daily grounding routine? Uh, my daily grounding routine starts at night, I guess. I sleep on a, a pillow that has a, one of the carbon black covers. Mm -hmm. And I have a sleep, mat or sleep mattress cover. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm always grounded during sleep. I get up in the morning and I usually get some coffee, but I have a, con I mean, I have a earthen type uh, marble type floor that is grounded. And so I have that benefit. <clears throat> I have a cup of coffee. Then I walk the dog for about 1500 steps. Got a right measure, got a certain path. So if I do that three times a day, I get 4,500, which is where I'm supposed to be. But anyhow, uh, so I have flip-flops that I make up myself that are grounded. So I'm always grounded when I'm walking. And I, uh, <clears throat> sometime like now it's really dry and I have to, keep the dog off the sidewalk anyway because of the grass. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I have an area where there's just lots of parks and lots of grass. So we can walk on the grass, so I'm always grounded then. Um, <clears throat> when I come home and, and I sit down to work on the computer, I have a grounding mat on the floor, but it's a concrete or it's a marble type floor, so it's flat and always there. Most of the time I have a mat here for my use for a mouse pad, a grounded mat underneath my computer that's grounded. Um, and then what else do I do? Um, I My massage therapist, when I go there, not as often as I'd like, she has a grounded table. <laughs> um, let's see. In your car, I know you have the auto yes. seat mat. Yes, I have the auto seat mat in the car. I've been using that for near 20 years. Yeah. And... Um, I'm just, oh, you know, I fell down the other day and scraped my arm and all kinds of stuff. So I wore a patch on it. The bruise is almost gone now. And it's healed up pretty good in four or five days. So I'm pretty much grounded as much as you can be. Um, when I go out to a restaurant, I may not be grounded, but afterwards I always try to get grounded as soon as possible so I can enjoy my meal. So I don't get any bloating or anything or any inflammation in my belly from eating things I probably shouldn't be eating sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But I do, I, I just, I don't, I mean, I'm so used to it. And uh, I, if you're not used to it, you have to put effort into it, but I kind of mm -hmm. work my life around. So I'm pretty much grounded all the time. And uh, I, I need the energy, I need to, not only that, I got to live up to this grounding thing. You know, I'm 77, I got to make it a long time. Otherwise nobody <laughs> will believe it. 
but all the people that don't, you know, have problems with, they'll probably be gone anyway. I'll still be here. You know, I'm, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> they'll all be grounded by then, but a different kind of grounding. Anyhow, enough of that. Very good. Well, I do have an update from Terry on YouTube. She is the one whose daughter feels that her heart, um, her heartbeat increases when she is on the grounding mat. Uh -huh. So she grounds at night when she goes to bed. Um, her pulse is always has always been a bit high, but it always seems to be higher when she's on the mat. It'll rise over 100. She's 39, and she doesn't take any medications, but she does have asthma. Okay, so she has an inflammation-related health disorder, which mm -hmm. asthma is. Um, <clears throat> how long? We don't know how long she's been grounding. A year or so? Uh, it doesn't say. Yeah, she doesn't say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I can't speak to it for sure, but I do know that I've had several people who have had elevated heart rate in the 100, 105, 110, and we get them grounded, then after a period of time, that calms way down. But it takes time sometimes to get the inflammation out. But uh, the lifestyle might be part of it. Um, you know, there could be other issues. Um, there's a stress related stress going on here, either physically or neurological or emotionally. Uh, I would just stay with it. I would you know, maybe get a little more grounding in, maybe get a little more exercise in. I, I don't know. Again, I, I'm, I can't, I'm not trying to play doctor here. I'm just going on observation and uh, the most obvious, but um, healthy food, walk, vitamin D, sunlight, get grounded, um, change anything in your life that's creating emotional stress that might be related to uh, flaring any of the asthma issues and so on. But grounding is excellent for asthma. Uh, you can put a patch right on the upper lung on, on the chest and it'll just it instantly stops asthma. And, but it makes the breathing so much easier. Uh, what this person may wanna try to do, and I'm not pushing anybody to have to buy a product or anything, but you know, if the, the patch kits that we have uh, putting patches on the lung, just experimenting with that and just see if the, the, respiratory, the respiration should be better and then the heart rate can come down. Because right now you have to get enough oxygen into the brain and it's taking that, that much effort of the heart to keep the oxygenation and the O2 saturation where it needs to be. So I think this is an issue that is more related to the asthma. And I'm not sure except stay grounded, maybe try sleeping directly on the black mat or whatever uh, until, and just experiment, 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 and try to find out what, what, what makes it easier to breathe, what relaxes the nervous system, mm -hmm. and so on. I know what we often will tell people, um, you know, when, who call into customer service is if they're having any kind of adjustment issues to add grounding during the day. A lot of times find, you know, yeah. if you're working, watching TV, you're kind of a little bit distracted. And uh, if you kind of, most people say they feel like a tingly effect uh, if they feel anything at all. Um, so perhaps adding grounding throughout the day. Yeah, the, the tingling effect is the most common. And what that is, it's just the sensation of the body equalizing with the earth. The body is absorbing these electrons and as it absorbs them and they come up through the legs and through the, the rest, uh, circula circulatory system. And you know, a lot of inflammation is being reduced along the way, but it's but just kind of holding your mind. You're like a little battery. The earth is a mother battery, big battery, and you plug in and then you're going to trickle charge. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Terry, I, I can see that Terry said thank you. So good. Hoping I think that helped. Yeah. Okay, Colleen is asking: Is it better to be moving and walking while earthing rather than just sitting barefoot on the grass? Well, moving and walking is is always best because you're ground. You know, you're it's circulating the blood and energizing the body and 
taking in the sunlight and all these things. <clears throat> but I, I don't think it's an either or thing. I think there are times when, especially in the beginning, if all you can do or all you have the resources to do is to sit and, and whatever for an half hour. Sometimes just sitting there for a half hour or an hour and paying attention to your body, to your internal functioning and just sensing, you know, let your body talk to you. Sometimes that's more important uh, in the beginning. Um, and yeah, so it's not an either or, but they're both good, maybe for different reasons, but they both should have the same effect. You're going to absorb the same amount of electrons at the same amount of time. But if, you're, if your uh, respiration is up, then you're going to be, if you're burning more energy, then you're gonna be taking in more electrons. Um, Very good. Uh, this next question is from Fred and Wilma. I don't know if that's their uh, screen name or if that's their <laughs> real name, but I love it either way. Cool. Uh, okay, so they, uh, I have a pacemaker. Will it interfere with the uh, mattress cover? So basically, is it safe to use a grounding mat if you have a pacemaker? Yeah, what we, <clears throat> it, it, the answer is yes, but that's a closed system in, you know, but think of it this way. If you can go outdoors, stand barefoot on the earth, uh, be grounded naturally, then you can be grounded in, in the bed with no issue. And we have okay. ca cardiologists on our on the Earthing mm -hmm. Institute board, and we've done a lot of work with cardiologists, studies, and so on. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay. Another question, uh, this one from Wilma. I just got a mat for my car. Is it going to help when I wear jeans? Yes. When you sit on it, uh, if you can recollect when you sit in a car, when you get out, your, your jeans are always a little bit moist. There's a little bit of hydration, perspiration, hydration on the back of your, on the back of your shirt and, and, and where you're sitting for sure. Yes, absolutely. Usually takes less than 30 seconds. Okay, um, we have somebody joining us on YouTube. This is Anne. She says, my very first exposure to earthing was when I watched the YouTube documentary film about two weeks ago. I had an extremely emotional response to that film as an aha moment that smacked me upside the head. I was shot multiple times in the light of duty in law enforcement. And as one might imagine, I have experienced a difficult battle with post-traumatic stress issues. I believe that earthing may be a game changer for me. I would love to know what you would suggest I do to get started. What is the best way to begin my er journey into earthing? Well, the, the number one thing I tell everybody is go outdoors and just ground yourself 30 minutes in the morning if you can. 30 minutes at night to get to drain the stress out of your body. Mm -hmm. So when you go to sleep, you know, the immune system isn't challenged. I mean, it has more resources. And then when you get up in the morning, uh, because your body has spent eight hours um, in recovery, uh, and, and there's a lot of things that need to be dissipated from the body. So half hour in the morning, half hour at night. If you don't, can't do anything else and do that, that's going to be life-changing for most people. Um, but if you are older and you need, and you are exposed to, I know what you're exposed to, and we work a lot with the firefighters and a lot with police, uh, and we've often worked with first responders and lots of people. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stress, a lot of trauma, drama, and everything that goes with it. And you need to ground that out of your body at night. Um, ground that, um, just the, the physical and the emotional responses. Uh, because anytime you have an emotional response to anything, your cortisol is going to spike. And, and, and when you're chronically in a chronic a situation where there's chronic um, stimulation, then like we talk about oftentimes is the parasympathetic will become diminished 
and then this sympathetic overdrives and that floods the body with uh, chronically floods the body with cortisol that causes anxiety, irritability, and eventually inflammation. And, um, and that leads to a host of, um, uh, of issues. So <clears throat> anyhow, the main thing to do is educate yourself, experience it. However, even if it's just take a hot bath in, you know, at night before you go to bed and get grounded via the cold water that's coming into your bathtub. But <clears throat> Um, so I would recommend with the, we, when we started marketing and creating these products 12 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever it was, can't remember anymore. But anyhow, we, these products were all created as byproducts of doing our studies. And when it came time to uh, everybody, the people, subjects in our studies wanted more products, the research, researchers, and then all their relatives. So it kind of turned into a business. But anyhow, as we went along, we asked ourselves, what is the number one thing we can do for anybody to um, give them something that they don't have to do a lot of extra work with, don't have time, or there's something they don't have to comply with, something that is part of their life. So that's when we developed the sleep mats or the, the uh, grounding mats that go in the bed. And the nice thing about those is very simple. You put them on the bed, whether you sleep directly on them or put a sheet over them. Uh, depends on your, the, you know, the, how significantly your system is compromised. But <clears throat> um, that way you don't have to do anything except come home and go to bed. Something you do every night, you just come home, go to bed. You don't have to do anything with it. Just lay down, go to bed, and, the, and you're grounded all night long. And your immune system uh, is, is significantly improved because you drain the inflammation out of the body. Then the, the immune system can work all night long restoring your body. And you get up in the morning, after a few nights, you're gonna feel, uh, you get up in the morning like you did when you were a kid, you just get up on the bed, you, you're ready to go. You're not dragging yourself out of bed and you're sharper and you're, you just have more energy. Uh, so that's the sign, you know, but, but anyhow, so then the, we added the pillow cover because we found in working with a lot of people over the years that when we grounded them with the sleep mat, that had grew tremendous life-changing benefit. Then we added the pillow and that had significantly more improvements in maybe a few other ways, but they're all related. And then we decided that the uni mat, that little small mat was something everybody needed. And uh, so they could use it at work, travel with it, do whatever, put their feet on it, sit on it watching TV or working. And then we added the patch kit because of acute injuries or acute trauma, surgery, any kind of issue, no matter what it is, if it's an acute thing, you put a patch on it and you're gonna recover in about, it takes 70% less time and 30% of the time it would normally take to recover. And uh, so we, so then <clears throat> we put, sat down and say, okay, let's put these together in a kit. So we came up with the, what we call the starter kit. And we've been selling that kit off and on for, 15 years, we yeah. hadn't sold, we hadn't sold it the last four or five years because we were going through a lot of transition, um, trying to bring out new products. So now anyhow, we're back with that product. It has a patch kit, it has a single mat, sleep mat, it has a uni mat, it has a patch kit, and it has a tester. Uh, for people who are just starting out, that's what that is for. It's significantly discounted, but to me, it's a tool that we can help people learn uh, and educate themselves and their families and everybody can experience it. And so anyhow, that, to answer your question, long way around, but to answer your question, if you were asking what I would recommend, I would do that to begin with, uh, unless you know more about it, then you may want a full mattress cover uh, rather than just the, the single. And mm -hmm. otherwise you start out the single and give that one to a daughter or somebody else and get a full one later. But any of the starter kit, I, I think, is the best product to go with, to start with, for this person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this person's been grounding about 20 hours a day for six months. They sleep on a mat, and they have universal mats for the day. Uh, they were recently diagnosed with severe LPR, which is silent reflux. 
and it continues to get worse despite grounding and diet changes. Would there be any potential benefit to putting the patches near the upper and lower esophageal sphincters? Things like that you have to experiment with. Um, in a situation like that, there's more going on than that. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know what it could be, but um, there's probably some uh, emotional stress here or there's other stresses that are involved here. They need to also be dealt with. But <clears throat> um, the grounding is going to reduce the inflammation and help. Uh, it's like going outdoors, standing barefoot on the earth. First of all, I need to ask, are these uh, the carbon products, the black carbon products? Yeah, let, let me double check. Yes, the uni mat, so that's a black carbon. And then they sleep on... It, they just said the sleeping and universal mat. Okay, so, so I'm not I, sure if they're using the black carbon to sleep. If they're using, if they're using the black carbon mat, then I would uh, suggest that they might sleep, try to sleep directly on it. Um, and then, um, but you know, that's going to reduce the inflammation in your body, put the fire out. But there's something else feeding this fire that's overwhelming the system. And that's either um, mental, emotional. Um, if the diet is cleaned up, then... Uh, it could be lack of exercise, lack of vitamin D. It could be, you know, other contributing factors. But <clears throat> anyhow, I would uh, use the patches to try to put the fire out and keep it out uh, and do whatever other forms of grounding are necessary to get the results that you need. But the fact that if they've slept on it for six months, uh, you don't just keep sleeping on it unless it's working. So something is working. So we need to, they need to figure out, ask themselves, what's feeding the inflammation? What's causing the cortisol, the stress? What's, uh, what's, you know, what's causing the stress that's flooding my body with cortisol that's causing this uh, issue to be chronic? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and again, I don't know. I mean, it could be, uh, I, I would have to know a lot more. Um, and this person probably already knows more than I. Uh, you know, from visiting with doctors and so on. But anyhow, uh, the grounding is going to help keep the fire out. Then you have to, <clears throat> being grounded to the earth is going to help you resonate with the earth and whatever. Uh, if you have a lot of noise and a lot of other things going on in your environment, try to quiet your environment a little. And um, just come to terms with, you know, let your body, your body wants to heal. You just need to get out of the way so that it can Okay. remove the things that are causing this. Diana purchased mats for her grandkids, ages 14 and nine, and they use them, but not consistently. Is there any hope that they are receiving benefit? I, I would think so. At that age, you know, your body is almost bulletproof until age 27 in nature. Um, and then after that, everything starts going the other direction. But <clears throat> your body has a lot of resources. They have a lot of bone. The bone is the number one uh, reservoir of free electrons to help maintain you know, the blood pH and the normal chemistry of the body and the electro mm -hmm. electrophysiology and the functioning of the body. So yeah, they're getting some, they're getting good benefit. Uh, as they, if they're into sports and stuff, I think they would probably use it more. Uh, it's probably, has, it's about education. Uh, if they don't have pain, it just isn't gonna, it's not going to mean as much if they're not stressed out. Uh, you know, it's when you get into your middle 20s and on that things start to accumulate and then you recognize when you're grounded and not. But yes, they are getting some benefit. Very good. Okay, I'm going to jump over to the YouTube questions here. Linda is asking, can earthing help with a leaky gut or should one continue using collagen and other supplement protocols to restore gut health? Okay. <clears throat> well, that's a, that's a big question. You know, it's like the bacteria in the gut has been disturbed. I mean, if you take the, you take a healthy person that lives in, uh, in nature or wherever, uh, that's something that probably doesn't occur. But <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, 
or I say here, food, we're eating a lot of foods that we shouldn't be eating uh, and in amounts that we shouldn't be eating. And there's lots of chemicals and lots of craziness that goes on with our food. Um, but anyhow, leaky gut is inflammation related, related. And again, we can put the fire out, especially in the joints and the, you know, all of the normal things. When it gets to leaky gut, I mean, your gut is probably more active than anything in the body other than the heart, but um, um, how do I say this? Um, the metabolic processes, most of the number one thing that produces inflammation in the body is just normal metabolic processes. That's why when you're grounded, it takes care of that problem and it's not a problem. But depending on your diet, um, but again, there's other issues. Um, it's never one thing. It's everything in the body is systemic. And so a thought, a shot of cortisol is going to affect your whole body. It's going, it's a master hormone and it's going to throw everything into fight or flight or whatever, even if it's minute. And if it does that often enough, then the system becomes uh, disrupted. But anyhow, so I guess to answer this question is grounding is definitely going to help. Um, sometimes people use patches uh, on the abdomen. Uh, in various areas. Um, <clears throat> some people use the tummy band that I think we're bringing back one of these days. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's ground yourself out as much as you possibly can. Uh, try to do some barefoot and vitamin D, you know, sunshine and ground. And um, again, something's feeding that. If, if, you're, if, you, if you're well grounded, but I don't think this person is not well grounded. So get more well grounded. Uh, ground your, you know, take the, uh, it's you know, sleep on your tummy directly on the black mat for an hour or two at a time. It's, it's life changing. Um, but anyhow, experiment, experiment. But yes, it's definitely going to help. I know that when I have gut issues, it's because I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. <laughs> but when I go back to just normal, good, healthy eating habits, then I'm fine. Comes and goes with my mental and my craziness that goes on in my life sometimes. Sorry about that, I was muted. We do have a testimonial here. Um, Terry says that she just went to the doctor today and her result, results are lower than six months ago. And the only change that she's made is grounding. So that's good to hear. Awesome. I also have a couple of questions. Um, I have one from Corey, one from Martel, uh, and their questions are basically the same. Would you recommend a person ground at least an hour a day? And should we ground every day? Um, or I'm sorry, how many days throughout the week should we ground? So I guess the general question is how often should we be connected to the earth? And for okay. how long? I have no option but to tell this story. Animals who live in the wild are grounded 24-7. A few hundred years ago, we used to be grounded 24-7. Throughout eons of time, we were always connected to the earth electrically. <clears throat> and over that period of time, we, you know, we developed floors in homes. We started building homes that hold the body in space. Uh, we started sleeping in beds in doors. We started wearing um, shoes that insulate us from the earth. And so this, so anyhow, the point I'm trying to get to here is animals who live in the wild, they have no, none of our modern health disorders like cardiovascular disease, autism, lupus, MS, and this host of everything that everybody's suffering from. On the other hand, the animals who live indoors with their owners who don't get grounded, they manifest the same health disorders as their owners and generally have a death rate of 50%, a 50% death rate of cancer. Now animals in the wild, cancer rarely exists in the wild. Uh, so, <clears throat> so anyhow, how much time should I be grounded? Um, I always say that any amount of grounding is better than no grounding. A half hour in the morning, half hour in the evening is probably what I would say suggest would be the minimum. 
Um, <clears throat> then um, if you have any pain in your body of any kind, you need to be grounded because that is a message from your body. Your body's on fire with inflammation and pain is a result of inflammation. You don't have pain otherwise, I mean, chronic pain. You won't have mm -hmm. chronic pain unless your body's on fire. So that means pain means um, pain in my elbow, pain anywhere means stop what you're doing, ground out the fire in your body so that the body can heal and, and pain. So to answer this question is, I get asked all the time, but there is no answer. But if you're younger, you can go a lot further. If you're older, some people who are older have to be grounded 20 hours a day. Uh, some people with MS and lupus, they have to be grounded 16 hours a day. Eight hours isn't enough, 12 hours. They have to have more, be grounded more than being ungrounded. So, but always know that being grounded is your most natural state. If you are grounded, you can't have chronic inflammation in your body. So when you get ungrounded, then you start to accumulate inflammation. Uh, your diet and various things may impact that significantly one way or the other. But uh, so it's, it's a lifestyle, it's a choice. Uh, it's, it's about quality of life, the healthier you wanna be. You need more vitamin D from the sun and, and more ground electrons from the earth. Uh, and then anything in between, you have to make choices. So I, I can't give you a statement other than any amount is better than none, but 24 hours is your natural state, 24 seven. Okay, um, ooh, we have somebody joining us from Montenegro and their question is, I have hepatitis C and a kidney cyst. Do you think grounding would help me? And thank you, by the way, I'm 41 years old. Um, I do know that if you put a patch on the kidney, it will help with the cyst, but it will take time. And at the same time, whatever's contributing to that, you have to pay attention to and try to uh, it's like the thing I try to say is grounding will stop the inflammation and, and begin to reduce it so the immune system can heal. But that's there because you've had inflammation in your whole body. And, and that's where, uh, and something in your diet. Um, but, but anyhow, so you've got to fix the other things. You have to reduce all inflammation. You have to uh, exercise, fresh air, sunlight, ground, uh, eat good food, but by putting a patch over the kidney where the cyst is, yes, I do have uh, experience with that, uh, with people um, getting significant reduction, but it does take a few months. Okay. And sleep, oh. with, the, sleep with the patch on, on the kidney. Okay, Esther has a question here um, about EMS. So, Esther did the, she says, I did EMF meter reading using the tri-field meter mm -hmm. with the sleep mats, the pillowcases and the grounding mats. And they all come up over a hundred uh, VM, acceptable is less than 50. Mm -hmm. Any explanation? No, I would have to be there to test it myself because uh, <clears throat> you know, using these meters, there's so much you have to take into consideration, you know, whether it's the wiring in the, in the walls at the head of your bed, the lamps, the ones that are in the floor, the ones that are in the ceiling, you know, how tall you are, you know, just so much it has to be taken into consideration. But the main thing is we have never, I've been doing this for 23 years and I was in the communications industry where we grounded, uh, grounding and shielding was our mission in order to have good quality uh, TV signals and sound and data, but I never found anybody yet that ever died from um, EMF. And I'm not saying that EMFs are good or all of that kind of stuff. I'm just saying that uh, people are focusing on the wrong thing when they're focusing on inflammation based on my experience over the last 23 years. A lot of people get upset with me, but what's causing the pain in everybody's body is lack of free electrons from the earth lack of vitamin D from the sun. It's not EMF that's causing this pain in your body. Um, and the food and all these other things, the environments, sure they will affect your nervous system and put a little stress on, but they are secondary stressors. And the only thing you can really do is start unplugging 
electrical devices in your home, getting rid of electrical cords in your home. And if you're really serious about it, then get a switch that you can turn off at night that feeds your bedroom and feeds all the wiring in the walls, in the ceiling, and in the floor. Mm -hmm. And I can go on for hours, but I just have nothing to offer except uh, I would have to be there to uh, make sure everything was you know, 100 meters, I mean, volts per meter is what we're measuring here. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that happens with a, I will tell you one thing, one thing that happens with a grounding mat or a person who is grounded. First of all, if you are a person who is ungrounded, then you are an antenna and you attract all these fields to your body. So if you're holding this meter, then you're the antenna that's feeding it as much as anything. Uh, <clears throat> but when the when you put a pad on your bed, then the Earth's charge is laying on that mat. And then the electric fields are radiating from your electric fields in your walls and your, you know, everything, your refrigerator, your lamps, everything that you use in your home that you plug in, uh, computers, cell phone chargers, everything. So anyhow, and nobody's going to get rid of them. So why is everybody, you know, everybody needs to let go of this, you know, but but anyhow, so when you are in bed and you are, and it's grounded, it's a ground plane, it is the same as the earth. Then there's a little null field, which is not something most people would be aware of, um, but there's a little null field and out here is your electric field. But that electric field is coming in, but it's being pushed back. So you have 50% going this way, 50% going that way, now it's 100. So it's, and there's information on all of this on the Earthing Institute. Dot net, and you can go in there and look at the uh, papers about misinformation about grounding and earthing and other, you know, EMF papers. There's a, a plethora of information there. But, <clears throat> but I know if people make their living protecting people from EMF, that's fine. I don't have no issue with that. But um, earthing, you need to go to the Earthing Institute and look at the papers, look at the research, look at the stuff we've done. And then if you have a question, then it needs to go to Gaetan Chevalier, who is the, uh, the expert in this. Uh, there's nobody out there that's in EMF that's, that is what I would call an electrical expert uh, in the sense that they are a triple E, you know, an IEEE e or, and so on. So there's a lot more going on with this. And unfortunately people get scared by meters and stuff. If you could see all the EMF in your environment, you wouldn't be able to see anything because it would be pure black. And you have thousands of cell phone signals hitting your body at any given time, radio signals, TV signals, uh, you know, all the, uh, the radiation from there. Everybody's worried about, um, you know, Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. Well, your TV set itself, your phone is your biggest problem and you've got it in your hand or in your back pocket uh, because it's not, cell tower it's the radiation from your phone to the cell tower that is the problem and and again it really gets back to as long as you every time you double the distance from your body a phone then you reduce the power the wattage that's affecting your body by 50 percent so you go out two inches half four inches a quarter uh, eight inches 12 and a half and goes down so just move it out get a speaker use your speaker do those things, do things that are prudent. Prudently avoid electric fields. Prudently unplug things you're not using. Don't have excess things in your bedroom. I totally and 100% 100 in support of that because it's noise. It's this, when this bed pad is there and this null field is there and you're laying in it, then you have a null field around you, but there's this push. And so anyhow, reducing this stuff, reducing noise in your home, especially in your bedroom, I absolutely support that. But it is not, well, earthing isn't any good because of this. It's, earthing is about something entirely different. Earthing is about maintaining your body at earth potential to prevent inflammation, to restore the normal functioning of the body. It has nothing to do with EM, EMF. It's just a natural phenomenon that the earth is infinitely large and EMFs are infinitely small, so they can't affect anything that's connected to the earth. And some of the, the sites that you mentioned, the earthinginstitute.net, if you go to the earthinginstitute.net and click on research, you can scroll down towards the bottom. 
there is a section called misinformation and there are about five articles here that talk about all of this. And if you have any further questions, um, Dr. Chevalier, he's a PhD in physics. You can contact him through that website at the earthinginstitute.net and he will, he will email you back. He's yes. very good at that. Yeah. Okay, um, our next question here is actually not a question. This is um, somebody else talking about their experience with earthing. Uh, she says, I bought my very first small mat two weeks ago and I'm already sleeping better. And I think I'm starting to lose weight finally uh, mm -hmm. that, I put, that I've put on from the last two years of daily stress. Yep. So that's really good to hear. Yes. Um, okay. If you have an elite bed mat, eh, is it more beneficial to lie directly on the mat rather than putting a bed sheet over it? Um, <clears throat> if you're moderately healthy and you just want good sleep um, and you don't chatter in your mind all night long and you don't have chronic pain um, and you don't have your health isn't significantly compromised with a, a major complication, then I would say sleep on the sheet. But in the beginning, if your health is compromised uh, or you're buying this because you want to you know, restore your health, then I would recommend highly sleeping directly on it for a period of time. At first, it'll be, this is crazy. You know, I'm not sleeping on a piece of carbon. But on the other hand, once you sleep on it the first night or two, then all of a sudden, uh, the results are such that you say, wow, this is in the, but then and sleep on it until the pain goes away, until you get your health back, until your immune system is recovering, uh, until, and it takes, some people it will take 12 weeks. Some people it will take a week but then go back and put your sheet on. You know, once you get your health back and your energy's back and your body recovers, then, then if you want a sheet, put the sheet on it. Or if you can't handle the sheet, I mean, you can't handle the mat at all, then sleep with the sheet, it doesn't matter. But yes, to answer the question, I always tell people that their health is compromised. If you start out, sleep directly on it. Very good. Um, we have a question about grounding babies. Is it safe to ground a newborn baby without any obvious illness? Uh, and is it considered a preventative medicine to ground children from birth? Okay, I wouldn't call it a preventative medicine under any circumstances. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> the most natural thing in the world is for a baby to be grounded. In nature, most all babies, all of our progenitors were grounded. I mean, they were born and while their mom was on the earth, they were through gestation, through all the time they were grounded in the womb. And we have lots of grounded babies that were grounded, you know, moms that were um, pregnant before, or grounded before and throughout their pregnancy. And they have, you know, wonderful experiences and so on, less pain uh, and a whole lot of issues and happier children, I think. Um, but <clears throat> anyhow, um, uh, we can't tell, I can't tell you to ground your child. I, that's just, there. We, we have a bed pad, which is fine, but there's a wire to it. Somebody has to take responsibility for that. We can't because our, our insurance companies won't let it. Anything to do with the child, any child products, generally people get sued the day they start out. Uh, and so it's a big, the insurance companies won't handle it and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so, but there's a lot of people that sleep with the babies uh, in, their, in their own beds uh, that are grounded. And then when they start putting them in their own beds, the, the babies are a little challenged because they're used to being grounded. Uh, but anyhow, this is a personal thing that you have to take extreme precaution uh, because of the wires around children. Um, but as far as the actual benefits of grounding is, if you take your child and let them go outdoors, and run around in the grass, they're gonna come in with rosy cheeks. If they had issues and they were all upset before they went out, they're gonna come in, they're gonna be happy when they come in, they turn into happy, normal human beings. So uh, grounding is part of, it's throughout all time, being grounded is what maintained our immune system electrically stable. As long as you have a good, healthy immune system, then you're not going to get sick. And if you do, you're gonna recover quite quickly. 
uh, it's when you your health is compromised and your immune system is I mean your immune system is compromised and you're exposed then that's when the colds and all of these other things show up um, but again all I can say really is experiment 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 and you'll be very happy um, um, I, my, both of my children were actually born grounded. Um, obviously, I was grounded throughout my pregnancies and I labored grounded. And what I used to do, uh, you know, obviously them sleeping in their crib wasn't comfortable with a cord. What I used to do is put a patch on me. And when I held them to feed them or, you know, you, they're babies, you hold them all the time. Um, they were just grounded through me, through, you know, the feeding process, holding them, rocking them to sleep, that sort of thing. Um, we all know skin to skin contact is beneficial for the baby. So if you yourself are grounded, I used to hold my babies and just go walk. Um, that's how I used to start every morning when they would wake up, right when the sun was coming up, of course, at the crack of dawn. And I would go outside barefoot and just walk around our yard in the grass, holding the babies. And that's kind of how we would wake up. Mm -hmm. So 100% you want to get them grounded. And there are definitely ways to do that. Yeah. Hey, Judy. That's sorry. That's the old fashioned way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the grass. <laughs> uh, Judy is asking about eczema. Do you know if grounding helps with eczema? Yes. Eczema is a, it's an inflammation related health disorder. You need to get grounded, stay grounded because uh, what's feeding that is inflammation in your body. And it's manifesting that way because your immune system is compromised to the point it can't take care of that while it's taking care of all the other things in your body. So get grounded, get the inflammation out of your body, and then that will automatically resolve. Excellent. Uh, Suzanne is asking about using her grounding mat on top of her bio mat. Is that okay? Yeah, as long as you put it on top, um, because otherwise you'll be insulated from the grounding. Mm -hmm. Now remember, bio mats, you're, you're only supposed to use them for a few minutes at a time, because that's a... Uh, a pulse elect electromagnetic field, and it pretty much stimulates a lot of the body. But, <clears throat> um, but normally, yeah, there's no problem using it underneath the, the mat. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next one is another um, success story. Uh, Terry says, every time I put the mat on the floor, my dog gets on it. So I, I have to get her the dog bed. <laughs> and yes, that is something that we now have. I uh, just launched a, a couple of weeks ago as the dog bed. Yep. We hear that a lot about pets feeling the grounding space. Yep. Okay, Connie has a question. For those starting out with grounding, do you recommend grounding for an hour or so to gauge a response or should you just go for as much as possible? Like I tell everybody, in nature, you would be grounded 24 seven. If you went to the beach, you might be grounded for four hours or eight hours. If you go camping, you might be grounded for, you know, 72 hours or whatever. Um, so it's, you know, if you're, if you have, you know, limes or fibromyalgia or some of these chronic debilitating degenerative health disorders, <clears throat> when you first get grounded, then the inflammation stops, but the immune system then immediately goes and starts clearing a lot, you know, doing a lot of repair and clearing a lot of uh, cellular damage and, and so on. So your, your body gets flooded with um, debris. And so it's like having a flu and the immune system attacks the flu. And so you feel, you know, nauseous, you have all these effects. So <clears throat> uh, if, you, if that is the situation, then what you need to do is go a little bit slower, experience it, know what it is and then go further and whatever and just come to terms with what you can and can't do uh, but don't make yourself sick you know i mean doing too much at one time um, but on the other hand 90 i would say 90 90 plus percentage of the people get grounded and go to bed and go to sleep and enjoy it yeah, yeah. Um, Eric here it lives with debilitating anxiety and he's going to get married in five days. Will grounding help his stomach issues? Uh, yes, uh, anxiety and there's a cortisol issue going on here. Um, 
and it's like the story we keep talking about, but that is the story uh, to a large degree with grounding, is that anxiety is um, overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. And it could be because of something that's going on at work, family, uh, life in general, um, all kinds of things. Um, <clears throat> but as soon as you get grounded, what it does, it calms the sympathetic nervous system, which slows down the cortisol. Parasympathetic comes back up. And with the, when you have chronic anxiety, you have an imbalance between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. And it's the cortisol pushing. And <clears throat> you manifest it maybe mentally, maybe in, in whatever, but your body is manifesting it. You are in a fight or flight state. And as soon as you go into a fight or flight state, the body shuts down digestion, pushes all of the blood and everything to the heart and chest cavity. And so then you end up with indigestion and all of those related issues. So by getting grounded, it's going to um, calm the sympathetic, settle the parasympathetic, quiet this fight or flight or this you know, response. And then um, maybe a little meditation, <laughs> maybe a little yoga, something to distract yourself from life. Um, you know, the bear in the woods and whatever's eating at you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, but it will definitely help, yes. Okay. Uh, Magdalene is asked. Sometimes I always have these second things. Sometimes I have to patch my head to quiet my brain. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. joking. <laughs> quiet the anxiety, noise. And, you know, anxiety, irritability, inflammation. I mean, they all kinds of issues. These are all related, fight or flight. Magdalene asks if earthing will help your immune system, immune system to be stronger. Yeah. The, <clears throat> the immune system is, if your immune system is operating at 100%, you can't have health disorder. Health is your body's most natural state. The immune system and, and your immune system is the organ that does that. I mean, it is the its whole mission in life is to protect you and rebuild you every day, 24 hours a day, recover and, and prevent pathogens and, and all of these things. So the problem is when you have inflammation, that's when, for instance, a neutrophil you know, um, reduces the pathogen and there's excess reactive oxygen or free radicals left over after that normal immune response. And there's not enough ground in the body, not enough electrons in the body to mop up and ground and reduce those excess radicals. Then they will, if we don't have it, then they're gonna steal electron from a healthy cell, damage it. And then this sets off the chain that we call chronic inflammation. It's, it's just collateral damage. It just continues like burning a log. <clears throat> so, when we ground and we reduce the inflammation in our body, then the immune system can immediately, first of all, go to work and clean up the damage that has been caused by the inflammation. And then it'll go back and restore the body fully. But if you, well, you have inflammation, your immune system is always compromised because it's spending much of its resources taking care of the fire, trying to manage the inflammation rather than taking care of the eczema or all these other issues that are showing up. But the number one thing grounding is about is restoring, reducing inflammation, restoring normal immune function, and that will restore the normal functioning of all systems of the body. It will restore health. Very good. Joan, uh, she sleeps on a sleep mat, and she recently recently used another mat across the pillows under her head. She woke up with a very sore, stiff neck and shoulders, and she it, and it's it's continuing even though she's been grounding every day with patches. Is it possible to overdo grounding? I'm not sure what the mat was that's on the pillow. If it's a uni mat. I would never sleep with a unimat because you're used to sleeping on a pillow and you need that flexibility and comfort, you know, and um, pushing the pillow around that you're comfortable. Um, 
I would, uh, I, I don't know how to answer this for sure because I don't know the full detail, but I would say go back to sleeping with your normal pillow or use a normal pillow cover, but just putting a, if it's a unimat, that's too stiff. If it's a, I don't know what other kind of mat it would be. Um, <clears throat> but you want comfort because your body is used to um, that comfort. Anytime you change mattresses, anytime you change pillows, you can get stiff necks and stiff bodies and so on. Um, I, I don't have the answer exactly, um, but I would think that um, I would put the patches on the bottom of the feet if I were using patches for that particular issue or the hands mm -hmm. uh, to loosen up the tension in the muscles. Um, um, I, um, I, I don't know what else to say at this point. Okay. Tell me more and I'll answer more, you know, if he wants to respond more. Okay. Uh, Michelle is asking about pools that you spoke about earlier. Um, you talked about the specific question earlier was about saltwater pools. Mm -hmm. Are chlorinated pools grounded? Uh, as, <clears throat> as long as they're filled with city water, generally, because city water has mineral in it, you know, because it's coming from the lakes, rivers, Mm -hmm. reservoirs <clears throat> and uh, it's fairly conductive um, so in your pool you oftentimes have metal housings here and there and bolts and stuff that you don't know what they are and some of those are grounding um, but <clears throat> as the water is pumped through your motor through the tubes and everything as it goes through there's some place in there I mean most of it's plastic granted, uh, but there are some places in there where there's metal and that will ground the entire pool. You don't have to have, because it's in the earth, first of all, it's in the exposed atmosphere and migrates. It's, yes, it's grounded. Yes. Okay. Mary is asking if you know of any benefit of grounding for, for schizophrenia. Um, like I said, we have a lot of experience. I have a lot of experience with um, uh, neurological disorders, people, especially um, um, seizures. And, um, and we deal with, you know, a lot of autistic children who have, are very sensitive and any change in their environment, then they go into, you know, flares of, whatever. Um, so <clears throat> I think I, you know, we're going to answer this yes, in the sense that what it's going to do, first of all, it's going to reduce inflammation in the body. It's going to calm down the sympathetic nervous system and help balance the parasympathetic. And then this person will be calmer because there's, you're kicking off fight or flight when you uh, set up these schizophrenic um, patterns and so on. So there's a, there are definitely neurological and um, um, again, I can't speak to it thoroughly without knowing more, but I would suggest uh, definitely if possible, if this is a child, uh, different, but a grand, an adult, outdoors, sunshine, get back in nature, go for, spend some time in the woods, spend some time at the lake, at the park, whatever, in, in quiet places where, um, they can ground out a lot of this, but, uh, and then daily grounding, if possible, night daily grounding, uh, just experiment a little at a time. It's as simple as taking a chair outdoors underneath of a shade tree and taking their shoes off and putting them on the earth and watch the color in their skin change, watch the demeanor change and watch the smiles come up. Um, it's hard to be, it's like people, it's hard to be angry or upset or unhappy when you're outdoors standing barefoot on the earth in the sunshine. It's just very challenging this way. Okay, this question is about the patches. Ruth says, is there an easy way to remove the patches or should we just leave them on until they fall off? They're so sticky, sometimes it hurts to peel off. Okay, that's rare. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, most times the patches come off relatively easy. Uh, they're designed that way. Generally when they are, the skin is dry uh, and they, they're too sticky. So that's usually a hydration problem. Uh, so skin hydration, I mean, just overall body hydration. So I would check into hydration, the things you might want to do. It isn't just drinking a lot more water, but hydration has something to do with your minerals and your the electrolytes and everything in your body. Uh, and I can't speak to it exactly without knowing more, but I would say there's a hydration issue there. But uh, on the other hand, too, you want to, if the patches are sticking, take the scissors and start cutting off some of the adhesive. You know, so there isn't as much big round because it's the center portion that is the ground. So if you just cut that in half, that'll reduce half that problem for this person. You don't need to do it for anybody else. Um, and if you're putting it on sensitive skin, always kind of reduce the adhesive area. But try that. But first of all, um, but do do some uh, look up and study uh, what you need to do to hydrate your body. Now, the second thing is never wear a patch more than 48 hours because your skin will eventually say, I you know, become allergic to them if you, because the skin has to breathe. And so each time you change patch, your patches, move them just a little bit so they don't irritate the skin. And then you can use them forever. Otherwise, you'll start getting red irritation from them and have to stop. Okay, here's a question about jet lag. Um, Ms. Michael says his son has just flown to Philadelphia from the UK and he has heard that earthing helps with jet lag. How long do you have to earth for this to take effect? Well, <clears throat> you'll get a significant effect with just 15 minutes. Say, when you get off the plane, go outdoors um, and take your shoes off and put your feet on <laughs> even the concrete, but uh, grass would be best. And that will reset, because your, your blood circulates about once every 15 minutes. And that will, you know, so, and everything in the body is electrical in nature. Even the blood is electrical in nature. So this effect happens fast. So what it's going to do is it's going to reset your biological clocks. And usually it doesn't take more than 15 minutes to really uh, make a significant difference. But then after that, uh, you, you go to sleep, you're onto that night, you're gonna wake up in the morning like you're, there will be no jet lag. Jet lag is because your cortisol is off two hours, three hours, depending on what part of the country you're from and where you are. It's not necessarily flying in the air. It's that your cortisol, your circadian cortisol secretion profile is off. So normally your cortisol elevates at four in the morning and it reaches the highest peak at nine, I mean, or at uh, six in the morning before you get up. That's what gives you that energy to get out of bed. So if your cortisol is three hours off, so that means that your cortisol would be uh, start to elevate at seven o'clock and wouldn't uh, finish until like nine o'clock or so. So then you feel like you have acid running in your veins. Mm -hmm. That's what you like. So your cortisol is off. So putting your bare feet on the earth or sleeping grounded is going to reset, reset your circadian clocks. Um, and then you don't have that jet lag. Did we uh, do a study on jet lag or was that just something we talked about? No, when we did our cortisol study down in San Diego, the first one, we had three stewardesses that were from New York, but they were stationed in San Diego for like you know, three weeks or three days a week. And so we, they're you know, easy to get them to participate because they're not doing anything you know, when they're mm -hmm. there. So anyhow, and it was a six week study, but when we first, we did a profile every 20, every four hours for 24 hours before we started the study and their cortisol was three hours off. And then we knew that, well, they're from New York. So there are, and then, but as soon as they got grounded, then it synchronized immediately with the locals. So, yeah, it was, we haven't done any, bonafide study, but we have all this anecdotal. And then we have, I think it was American Airlines. They had a paper on it one time where they just told all their people to get grounded after you after a flight to stabilize your cortisol. So it's out there. Okay. 
Um, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, Svetlana is asking, how does earthing interact with the metal in a total knee replacement? Um, it would have no effect whatsoever. It would, the only thing it would do is reduce the inflammation so that you would have uh, better functioning, um, would have no, no impact at all other than that. It would become negatively charged, but that's good because that, like your red blood cells are negatively charged. So it's normal, no effect. All right. Uh, we do have one, uh, one more question, not really a question, uh, more of a testimonial. Uh, I have fibromyalgia and I also have the ability to feel other people's energy, which can be very overwhelming. Yep. And I often feel depleted. Grounding myself is the only thing that helps me. Exactly. Yeah, I think that just kind of shows what. So that's know, restoring, are, it's restoring the adrenals. And restoring the natural state. Grounding is natural. Yep. All right, Clint. Well, thank you very much. Hey, anytime. Yeah. Let me know. And let me know. And I'll be right back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, we will be back okay. on uh, Monday at 3.30 Pacific time. Uh, we try to get to all your questions. We ask, you know, I recommend you log in early. Uh, looks like the last question I got to was around 4.30 or so. So the earlier you get your questions in, um, the sooner that we, or the more likely we are to answer them. I do go in order that they come in. Yeah, and we, and we like to hear stories, not so much for ourselves, because we've been doing this forever, we know, mm -hmm. but to share it with other people, uh, to help them understand and, and uh, make more sense of what we're talking about sometimes. Absolutely. So if you haven't done so already, we recommend that you follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also to our newsletter. You can subscribe to our newsletter at earthing.com. This will just make sure you're in the loop regarding our upcoming sales and webinars, product announcements. And you can also watch on our YouTube channel all of these webinars um, that we've done in the past, as well as watch the Earthing movie. So thank you, Clint. Thank you to everybody for submitting your questions another great, another great Q&A session. Take care and have a good night.